Game one of the NIT season tip-off tonight in the Dome. It's a first ever meeting between Syracuse and Seattle. And good evening, everyone. Welcome inside the Carrier Dome tonight. Brian Higgins, former R and sharpshooter Matt Rowe. And Matt, there's been an all-points bulletin out for some offense here for Syracuse after that 34 in the opener against Virginia. Well, throw Virginia out. Someone has to step up and score besides Eliza Hughes and Buddy Beheim. Mm -hmm. Every scout knows that. Every team's going to try to defend against that. Well, if somebody has to step up, it might as well be the all-time leading scorer in the history of New York State high school basketball. The freshman Joe Girard gets his first career start. Well, Girard's brought intensity every time he's been in the game. Crowd favorite. He really steps it up. But we know he can do this, averaging 34 points as a senior at Glens Falls. He hasn't really shot the ball well, but his IQ to be able to look for bigs running down the court like Sudibe like that is invaluable. He, he averaged 55-0 as a junior for Seattle. They got a veteran point guard, Terrell Brown. Matty, you really like him. This guy can do it all. Well, it's a tough first matchup for Gerard, but this is a hawking defender. He also leads the team in rebounding, and he leads the team in 22 points a game. He's a do-it-all guy. The 8.3 rebounds a game out of a guy that's barely a buck 60 aggressive tells you how well he's been rolling this season. Well, the beginning of the NIT season tip-off tonight, the first of four games that all of these schools will play. The Orange ticketed to Madison Square Garden around Thanksgiving in a couple weeks' time. And we are ready to go here in the Dome tonight. Miles Carter will jump it up with Rama Sidibe as Elijah Hughes set for another star turn tonight inside the Dome. Crowd on their feet, as always, and a false start on this yeah, jump ball for Burt Smith. Keeps the nerves going when you can't throw the jump ball like that. But uh, Seattle's ball, SU versus SU. Yeah, East Coast SU, West Coast SU. A winner keeps the letters. <laughs> Orange open the game in the 2-3 zone. As per usual, and here is Terrell Brown, Seattle's a leading scorer. He and Miles Carter, a dynamic duo that we'll have our eyes on tonight. Seattle's been a little banged up this year, but all but one of their guys ready to go tonight. Brown. Can't hit on the first points. And here comes Joe Girard as a cheer comes up for the freshman his first career start. Bayheim can't knock down the three. And we're going to be watching Barama Sidibe, though, a little bit tonight here as we look at the hard starting five. He had a great second game of the year. Man. There's no doubt. And Girard helped that. Six of six field goals, 12 points, 14 rebounds. But Girard opens up the floor for him, as does Buddy and Hughes. And he'll have a lot of opportunities for touches down there like that. We showed that alley-oop in the open of Girard fighting Sidibe. But it is Seattle with the first points of the night. And they belong to Miles Carter. Well, he's one of the bright spots for Seattle, a big that can score both inside and out, gets to the free throw line. He'll be a tough guard for that zone. Had 37 earlier this week against Pacific University. Dolajai, Sidibe, and continues his hot streak this week. Barama's made his last seven shots. Here is the starting five for the Red Hawks in from Seattle. We talk about Miles Carter. This guy, along with Terrell Brown, has been a beast inside here. Well, it's 38 of your you know, points you score in a game, and uh, they, they are the one-two punch inside, outside. The one thing Brown doesn't do, though, Brian, is he's not a great three-point shooter, one for four in the year. Sidibe with possession, and Gerard, every time he's touched it, it's given a little rise from the crowd so far tonight. Beating Sidibe here of late, considering his recent success. Gerard's first look is good in his first start. That's what he does. He's able to get that off the dribble. And again, you're spacing around Barama Sidibe with four capable shooters. The answer from Morgan Means won't drop. Loose ball foul on the rebound. Didn't take long here, Matt, for Joe Gerard to work out this the early nerves. It's great to do this, though. If you're known as a shooter and you can get it off the one-two bounce like that, it will add confidence for him seeing the ball go through the net and now look for him to pull up deep from three. He's had a couple opportunities to do it, and he's, he's kind of deferred to Buddy both times. First career start, what, what's this like for a guy? Well, I tell you, I was thinking about it today for him. I was told four days before playing South Florida his Buddy's got an open three there and nails it coming right down. That's what those two can do together. But very nervous, Brian, for the whole week. Uh, you, you know it's coming. It's been in the press for Joe. And it's not an easy thing, but it's easy to make your first basket. You feel really good about it. I was watching him during the national anthem. He could not stand still. He was ready to go tonight. And the Arch ready early with the 7-2 advantage in the opening three minutes. Delonte Jones first touch. He'll hoist along two. 
Gerard saves it, but to Carter. Hey. And Terrell Brown gets his first bucket of the game. Amazing, the point guard operating on the baseline of that zone. He does it all down there. Coach Hayford really likes him, and uh, he says, I've got a two-man two team, really. The others have to step up, and we've seen that so far with the only four points for Seattle. Dolajai post move, and connects. And the shoes come off, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, lost by, shoe little assist there. there by JG3. Talante Jones has the footwear back on. And no stop and play to keep it going. So much runs through Brown and Carter. Brown has it now. Carter posting up hard inside. Delonte Jones, a corner triple. And Gerard. Bayheim, a trailing Hughes. Catch it. Tell you what, Jimmy Hart from the uh, Albany City Rocks has to love this backcourt. This is a backcourt he played two years ago uh, for, for the City Rocks. It's Gerard and Buddy Behan. There's his one and two. And uh, if you would have added Elijah Hughes to that team, it would have been pretty good with a one, two, three punch. Well, that's a pretty good AAU program in New York State and the capital region, at least where it operates out of. Seattle dealing with the R in zone. They play against Mike Hopkins' Washington team every year, so some experience with the zone. C.D. Bay the rebound. Now Gerard again. Like it didn't take anything that they didn't give him. He's going to give him the three. Got to take it. And Joe Gerard's made his first two. And Seattle calls timeout. How he about will, this kid? His first career start. He will be a fan favorite, Brian. It is amazing what he does and the intensity he brings and. Just an easy shot. You're setting it up. Three guys outside. But here's Joe Girard. Here's what he does best. Glenn's Falls seen that many a times. A month after the left. Hot start in the Dome for the Orange tonight. 15 to 4 the lead. And a lot of it because of the true freshman starting at point guard. Joe Girard. Matt, look at this list. This is freshman point guards that have started under Jim Beheim. That's a pretty high success rate with Pearl, Adrian Autry, Jason Hart, Jerry McNamara. There's two of them right there and Red and Jerry and Joe Girard, four minutes in, is living up to it. I'll tell you, out of all of them, and there's a great list there, but Pearl Washington, to me, started the program here at Syracuse, and a lot of those point guards followed suit with him, but uh, amazing list of point guards, and uh, Joe's in a special company. Didn't technically start the first two games, but he could have a long year a career here starting at Syracuse. It's amazing how many on that list ended up as four-year starters for this guy, Jim Beheim, in his 44th year in charge of his alma mater. And he's not afraid. If he's got a freshman that can go, he gets him on the court and they play. Hughes, tough finish inside. Great pass dive by Marek Dolajai. Just the awareness. You got. You have three or three or four great IQ players, Brian, around. Not saying Barama's not an IQ player, but when you he's at the center, you put four guys around him like that that can think, pass, shoot, unselfish. That's a tough team to stop. Well, they are out to the extremely hot start tonight. That's not been the case in either of the first two games this season. Did not have a field goal for more than six minutes last time out as Seattle answers with Terrell Brown. I really like Brown. He just has the awareness about him down there. Sribi Sadibe gets a... Uh, Really a hammer down there, but um, I'll tell you what, Brown has is, is lived up to Coach Jim Hayford. There you see him right there. Probably one of the best conference calls we've ever had, Brian. I enjoyed him. our time. Oh, I don't know how much we, we could share. He could recruit me anytime. I mean, <laughs> his sense of humor, his stories, uh, spot on. Very good friends with Mike Hopkins out in Seattle. He's, you know, they've, they've hung out together. They're very mutual friend, Larry Brown. Uh, and uh, one of the one of the greatest coaches. A little trivia question for you. Larry Brown, the only coach, Division One, to win an NCAA tournament mm -hmm. and an NBA championship. There's no other. Figure that one out. Did it at Kansas and then with the Sixers? Pistons. Pistons, pardon yes. me. That's right. Yes. The, uh, yes. Yeah, that 4 Rip Hamilton. That's right. Sheed Wallace. There you go. Pistons team. But, yeah, Knowledge is good. Jim Hayford set up pretty well there in Seattle. It, they're in the whack here. You've got a program in Seattle. You're going to play a lot of your games at the now renovated, soon to be NHL arena. That's a good spot to be in as Aaron Nettles off the bench drops a three. Love Nettles. In the last game, he made all his points 16 of them at the free throw line. It's his first field goal from the floor. It's amazing. He, was he 0, can shoot. He was 0 for 4 on Tuesday from the floor, 16 of 18 from the line. A truly peculiar stat line is Buddy Beheim with the three. 
But he's going to get a lot more opportunities, I think, with Gerard out there. It's evident right now. And if Coach Hayford's team doesn't know Buddy can shoot, there might be alert on him. That's his second three. Miles Carter, the travel. Coach Hayford in his third year, and he has turned around programs wherever he's been. Went to the uh, tournament multiple times at Eastern Washington. Came out to Seattle before that was an exceedingly successful Division Three head coach also in the state of Washington with teams that rose as high as number one in the country. But the Orange tonight, a hot start here in Joe Girard's first start. Elijah Hughes. Oh, that, is a, that is a pro move right there, Brian. That is, uh, can't teach that. Um, you know, Harden, James Harden's made that popular in the NBA. Everybody's doing it. Um, but uh, a great through the leg step back. And there's been a little adjustment with Coach Hayford. He's put Terrell Brown on Buddy to suffocate him. So we'll see how that matchup goes man to man. Well, that resulted in Hughes getting a good look that time down. Nettles the push off and a foul. Well, it's been slow starts. Certainly the Virginia game, in many ways, you got to throw it out in the season open. It was just such a sure. weird. Uh, evening, but it was a slow start against Colgate for Jim Beheim's squad earlier this week. No field goals in six minutes. It was almost an exi this exact point of the game where they finally got one. They got 23 points to that. Well, you put number 11 in the game against Colgate, kind of switched things around a little bit with Gerard. But um, I agree, throw, throw the Virginia game out with that pack line defense. I mean, every team in the country is going to score between 30 to 50 points against them tops. If you, if you score 50 against Virginia, you're having a great game. Beheim fouled and fouled by Terrell Brown. Well, Matt, the Orange here in seven minutes have not committed a turnover, have not committed a foul, and are shooting 90%, if that works for you. Good things usually happen when you hit those stats. Yeah. You're, you're going to win probably 99.9% <laughs> of the time. I'd like to see the game you lose with those numbers. Beheim. <laughs> Orange do turn it over. Here's Terrell Brown. Blocking foul on Gerard. I like the fact that... Right here, the draw try to get the feet down to take the charge, but just you can't lean with the body. And, and Brown, being a, 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 a third, fourth year redshirt junior, he knows the way around the court. He's, he's savvy the way he plays. He's on the baseline, he's got a good free, you know, a foul line jump shot. Not gonna wow you with his three point shot, but this kid right here, uh, you know, Coach Hayford even made the suggestion that a lot of teams, including Circus, love to have this kid as a point guard. Um, we don't know that. I mean, he's two, three years older than Gerard school-wise, mm -hmm. but uh, a tough competitor right here. Brown, second team All-League last year. Preseason pick to be first team All-League in the WAC this season. Makes both. With the Orange comfortably up at early 12 here tonight in the Dome. Offensive foul on Syracuse and a legal screen. Uh, Paramus City Bay. Gerard's got a sneaky handle. You watch him, and I'm sure it's gotten better since he got to college, but stays low and not looking at the ball. Love it. Good for young kids out there. He's behind the back through the legs. Head's always up, calling outside line. And sometimes you got to go a little slower off that high screen so you don't get a big foul for, for, for your, your big man. First star and subs are Gerard out after an exceedingly successful start with the freshman Price and Goodine replacing him. And you saw Jesse Edwards checking in for Barabas Sidibe. Really like Bryson in warm-ups. Reminds me of a young Michael Carter Williams. Very long, athletic, can really get up. Well, they played at the same high school, that's, so. That's probably his protege mentor. Hundahl from the corner just in. This is a three. Rebound by the orange freshman, Big Edwards. Here's Hughes. Good eye. Pass for Beheim, intercepted by Brown. What a move up the court and goaltending. On Dolezal. Yeah, you can't, you got, you got to love Brown. Uh, just, just old school, knows the passing lane, spin here. Kind of like Marek's move against Colgate last week, and Marek seen that and didn't want to allow it and gets called for goaltending. Can't touch the ball if it touches the glass. I'd say you were right to be impressed by this Terrell Brown coming into the game. He's shown some good stuff early on in the dome. Really savvy. Here's for Dolezal. How about a couple savvy pump fakes and a finish? I'll tell you what, just very, very, Marek's done this twice, Brian, with an up fake, shot fake, good for young kids. Show the ball, show it twice, and uh, has made a great move there to get to the free throw line. Good start for Jim Beheim's club tonight in the Dome.
Back in the Dome tonight, hot start for the Orange have missed just one shot out to a 25-13 lead over Seattle in the first all-time meeting between these programs. And look at that, it's the Orange with the offense tonight, but that Seattle was the team that was bringing back so much of last year, so impressive to see the Orange doing this in the early going. It's really amazing. Um, you know, Seattle's known for third, fourth year juniors and seniors. They redshirted a couple kids, but um, amazing with just the, the real lone scores coming back from Syracuse team last year, Hughes and Bayheim a little bit with Dolojai, but... Uh, those three have been very hot for Syracuse. Obviously, shooting 10 for 11 from the field helps, but uh, very good spacing by Syracuse right now. A lot of confidence on the orange side. Dolezal completes the three-point play from prior to the break, and the orange currently doubling Seattle here. Seattle will work the perimeter against the orange zone. There's Miles Carter, their main post threat. Love the left with Carter, just very versatile down there. Reminds me of an undersized kind of a Sam Perkins down there. Perkins 6'11", but Carter just very long, lanky, loves to go to that left hand on the jump hook. More early career Perkins yeah. than when he was Perkins doing became the, the three-point three 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 shooter at the end of the career. He went to my high school, you know, so I claim Sam. Oh, really? Good eye for Hughes. And a takeaway by Morgan Means. Means has been bothered by injury this season. A bad sure. thigh bruise kept him out on Tuesday. And sure. Coach Hayford is hoping when he gets back to health, it'll kind of smooth things out for the team. Shaker high, huh? Shaker high. I didn't know that, Brian. Me so, and Sam. Wow. I was shocked when I found out he went to Shaker high. And I was like, what is he doing there in Albany, right? I haven't figured that one out yet. Yeah, okay. He graduated okay. in 78. Dolce again, coast to coast for the second straight game. Euro bringing the Euro. I like that. A little bounce, no dunk, but very athletic. No spin move, but that yeah, was pretty good. We'll take it. Orange up to a scalding start on offense. Missed one shot nearly halfway into the opening half. Here's Carter on the freshman Edwards and overpowered him inside. Yeah, he's got the left down there. He knows what to do, knows how to operate. The height is not intimidating. Miles Carter. Miles Carter started his college career at Seton Hall. So he was a decent. Uh, recruit out of the Chicago area, but transferred after his freshman year. It's had a good home at Seattle. Terrell Brown's done a great job with Buddy. Uh, once the switch has been made, Buddy's he, not getting many looks. He is following him everywhere. Let's see if Goodeye can take advantage along two. Rebounding foul on Dolezal. Here's Marek in the open court again. Love the deflection here. Look at the hands. Inside hand, usually with the outside, but he knows what he's doing there. Look at that. Two, take advantage of the two steps. A lot of arms and legs flailing there. I'd say he, Marek Dolzhai can take a long step at 6'10", the junior out of Bratislava, Slovakia. Seven points, three helpers already. He's really passing the ball well this year. He's man. doing really. Again, I talked about his IQ. He's great. It's kind of a point forward in the offense, and I'm liking the set Syracuse has been running. Coach is throwing in some new wrinkles into his offensive set. The 2-3 zone remains stout as ever. Best three, a rebound and miss put back by Hundal. And guess Carter who? inside with the power. But Edwards stands his ground. And did get a touch, and now a Hughes three. Rebounding foul on the freshman. Jesse Edwards as Hughes could not connect. I'll tell you what, Seattle's kind of slowly grinding, creeping in. They missed a couple of short layups down low. Carter on that last one had two chances, but um, doing a better job defensively finding Buddy. And uh, it might be a time where coach wants to look to bring back in Gerard right here to kind of get, get get a run going. Dolajai will get his first breather. Sidibe returning. And the freshman Quincy Guerrier in for the first time for the Orange. Gerard not back in as of yet after the strong start. It is first career start. Quincy, Quincy's got the highlight sneakers. You can't miss those, Yeah, you'll right? see him. <laughs> Where, where'd he go? Those are popping. Look at him. Yeah. Those are great. I mean, you got you to be a player to wear those, right, Brian? You just can't show up wearing those and not have game. I'd say Tyus Battle had the whole shoe warehouse in sure. his locker last year, so somebody had to take up the mantle. And yeah. here is young Quincy. Rebound by Hughes, orange ball. Up level. You said it, Matt. This is a solid job by Seattle. The Orange made 10 of their first 11 shots. That This has not been a complete runaway and hide yet. No. Uh, you'd be happy to be in the game by 10 uh, with Syracuse out to that scorching start. Seattle hoping that you got to cool down at some point. They will here with a turnover. And now a foul on Bayheim, giving one on Means. 
That's a sloppy passing there. Um, Bryson's got to do a better job of controlling the ball there. Actually, Buddy's coming out. Interesting sub. So Bayheim out. That was Joe Girard you saw returning. So this is now a three freshman lineup for Jim Bayheim. Garrier, Goodine, and Girard will play with Hughes and Sidibe. I think it's safe to say Hughes will be averaging like 38 minutes a game this year. He doesn't come out much. Uh, he does not. Not even in the Colgate game in the second half. He got to he come out so four minutes to go in the game. Foul on Sidibe, his second. Sidibe just came back in the game and picks up number two. And now you're going to see Marek playing the center position, which hasn't happened a ton this year. Certainly not as much as last year. No. Very was... versatile. Okay, you can play in the whole back line. Oh, boy. That's one way to get it to Pharrell Brown. The lob into the backcourt. He's impressed so far. Brown here. Pass deflected and will stay with Seattle. Where you want to use the bounce pass. It was the right pass that Terrell saw is bounce that. The bounce pass would have gone at the highlighter shoes, though, which... Sure. He would have, he would have found it. Tough move. Brown got it off clean. But Carrier the rebound. Gerard back in to operate the offense. Three ball. He can make that. It opens up a lot of things for this team off this screen. His double shot. Rex is doing a lot of easy things, Brian. I mean, he's constantly the IQ here. Look at using the up and under to find Barama Sadibe for an easy layup. Here on the wing, he gets it. And he knows Elijah Hughes is going back door. You can't teach that pass. That's a 15 foot bounce pass. And then the deflections. I mean, he's three for three from the floor, but these are the little things that you have to do. And when you play with one through four guys that are 11 for 13 together, they're all high IQ guys. You just put them around a center like Sadibe. You've got a, you've got a powerful punch there. We talk, we've talked so much about the idea of Gerard starting at point guard. Part of what makes that transition smoother, you got another playmaker and you're forward on the Sure, it's a, it's a point forward. And today's game's positionless. I mean, you do have a center and most teams have a point guard, but the rest of them, you have to be able to do multiple things. Terrell Brown short out of the three. Saved by Nettles. Great play. Seattle's just kind of hanging in here after this unbelievable start on offense by the Yards, but a travel inside by Miles Carter. Key for Seattle is you, you want to keep it so 10 around 10 at halftime. You have another, you know, eight, seven and a half minutes here. Try to grind it out, keep the defense on. You now have Brown on Girardi, you know, buddies out of the game. So that's his matchup. He wants to shut down there, and the other one's shoes and try to make other guys beat you, but stay in this game around 10 points. Keep rebounding with Carter, and you've got a shot. Good on. Log two. Those are tough shots. I mean, three good iron shots. Athletic try to get something going in the basket. He's tried to do three pull-ups. All of them been long. Morgan Means eyeing the Syracuse 2-3 zone. High low look for Carter. What a pass. Delonte Jones could not finish with a rebounding foul on the Red Hawks. Jim Hayford, such a smart coach, he said it. You know, Terrell Brown is such a great passer that if my guys could make shots, he, he would, you know, he had 21 assists coming into this game. He, he could be averaging seven, eight assists easily with the fact that he's just such a great passer, but uh, Seattle just having a hard time to finish near the rim. And they're just waiting to get Riley Grigsby back as well, give him some punch from the outside. He's out with a hand issue. They expect him back around conference play. Hughes, and a wide open Gary A bounds it home. Nice spacing again there. Heads up play by Hughes. Heads up. Nice dish down. So it helps the shooting percentage when you get looks like that. 13 of 17 from the floor. Stunning numbers. Nettles a three. Gerard. Gary A. And he hit the deck hard. I think Quincy got a little extra step. I hope he gets up. I think he got a two and a half stepper here. But a nice pass by Joe on the, Joe on the bounce. Close. But a way to attack the rim. That's you got to go hard. And, uh, definitely uh, paid the price for it. See if Gary A can collect himself at the free throw line here. Quincy, the freshman out of Montreal. He started in the exhibition games. Then Dolajai. Ended up starting at that spot so far in the regular season. 
think coach knows what he's gonna get with Marek. You know, can play a lot of different positions. It's time, it's, it's his junior year, it's time for Marek, and he's showing that, that he deserves to be out there. He does hurt you in so many different ways. Just overall IQ, and it's tough. Your freshmen have to be very, very special to start in this program. As young as they are, I know they lost a lot, the four starters, but um, still have to be exceptional players of freshmen to start at Syracuse. Well, still three freshmen on the court, and Gary A. Goodine and Gerard near steal. That means another offensive rebound. Brown. And you know Gerard what? fouled. Joe might be only six feet tall. He's got his nose in there for a lot of rebounds. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's constantly trying to make steals active. Uh, impressive, but uh, no problem in there going in there the battle and jumping for every rebound. Uh, he was also a great high school football player. He's the quarterback at Glens Falls. Won two state titles on the football field, including his last high school football game in this building. So he's not afraid of the physicality, despite maybe not being as tall as some of the guys out there. Probably makes you a little bit tough, I would assume. I would imagine. And we know that Joe Girard will be a good free throw shooter. You don't score... 50 a game in high school if you're not talking down the freebies. Yeah, uh, amazing. He's about to hit first player in the game, double figure points. Charles Brown started out with eight real in the first five minutes, but there it is, your first start. You have double figures uh, with, with five minutes to go in the, in the first half. Those were the first two free throws he's taken in his orange career and knocks him down without issue. It's pretty safe to say he's going to get a start the next game. I think he's got that pretty well locked up at this point. 10 of the arch, 36. A little more than five minutes to go in the opening half. Jones. To Campo. Long three. Means couldn't hit. Gary the rebound, and he is fouled by Jones, and this will be a one and one. It's fun just to watch Gerard fly around on defense. I mean, he's probably not the quickest player out there, Brian, but he his anticipation, there's a step in his effort. You know, you you talk to it all the time. There's so many talented young kids out there, even at the NBA level, NCAA level, high school, junior high. But you got to give effort. Uh, if you're not going to play hard all the time, you're, you're wasting your coach's time out there and your teammates. He's just he's moving around all the time, talking. Brings a little, a lot of the intangibles that this team needs. A fan favorite before he played a minute in the Dome this year. Carter. A corner three for Jones and fouled by Goodine. Well, the Orange freshmen get a little PT here. He got the big lead, and I think Coach Beheim can afford some patience here with these mistakes at this point to get guys like Bryson good on some minutes here. Well, look, you, you can't go through a season with five guys. You've got to have a sub at the guard position, whether that's going to be Jalen Carey eventually, whether it's good on, you don't know. Um, Carey's not gotten in this game yet. Um, seemed put on a good face in warm-ups, was, was energetic. Um, you know, you need, a, you need a big guy coming in uh, in the forward position. And um, you're going to need seven or eight guys to get through this ACC gauntlet when you get to that conference play. Uh, Jalen Carey, obviously, he's a big-time recruit. He started the first two games this year. There's Jalen. It just was not working out in the first two games, which is not to say it won't work out at some point. Sure. Got to keep it. Like Demetrius Nichols said, look, at he lost his starting job junior. A lot of guys have lost starting jobs and come back in battle and, and gotten better for it. But tonight it is the freshman Joe Girard running the point for the orange and running it well. He's the game high scorer right now with 10 points and has not missed a shot. Dolajai's been making plays, one for Hughes. Bring it up for Elijah Hughes. And a second double figure score for the orange. Six of eight from beyond the arc and Seattle has struggled. And not just tonight, they've struggled from three all season, just 20% as a team coming in. Tough runner for Brown. Hughes again. It was a tough shot, a little early in the clock. He was feeling a little heat check there. They said he's the guy with the green light. Yes. And it just made the one. Zone a bit unsettled.
Don't know about the guitar, but he's feeling it a little bit. He's stealing Hughes' celebration already. I think he was doing it too, Elijah, who has started that all with the block. What a half for the Orange. Economo in the game for the first time. Now Carter. Ah, Seattle's had a lot of high-low opportunities, a lot of missed layups. Now the Orange first half has been special, and it's been led by Elijah Hughes, mostly on offense. But how about the D? For 10 from the three-point line, that's a D-Nick, Matt Rowe kind of shooting day. We'll get more from Jonathan and Demetrius at the half here. These guys are feeling it. Um, you know, it's, it's spreading the court. It, it is playing unselfish. Uh, but again, again, this is an early game, non-conference Seattle. Not to pick on Seattle, but uh, guys seem to be playing hard, and that's half the battle. And there's, there's, they're scoring uh, at a huge clip. More points than they had against Virginia, obviously. But uh, a lot of scoring going on for the Orange. Jerry A. Touch in the box. Now Hughes again. Pull up. Well, Hughes has free reign from out oh, there. Yeah, he's got the. I call. I don't call it green light. It's the Kelly green light. Do whatever you want. It's deep green. Just. Uh, What's the most green? Yeah. It's, it's nice to have that. Economo and carry a, a strong rebound. I like how they push it up quick though. It's sideline, sideline. You have Elijah be able to handle it out there. They're moving the ball, trying to run. Garrier with power and foul. This is great. You know, it's good square up. Fake right, go left. It's an easy move. A lot of people figure you're going to go to that right side. If you can move that body and get him on a quick jab step, you usually get the movement and you're going left is a much easier move. I know the coaches like to see him on the glass. Four rebounds already, and you just look at him for a freshman. This guy is at least built to play sure in the is. ACC, the rugged leagues like that. Sure he is. He'll be a, a very valuable piece off the bench. As a freshman, he gets better. He's got to work on the free throw. There you go. Well, he played very well in Syracuse's summer tour in Italy when Dolajai was out injured, so he had a significant minutes available at that forward spot. Obviously a little harder to come by the PT, the way Marek Dolajai is playing right now. Economo. Here's Brown. Leading the way for Seattle right now with the eight. Looking for double figures. There he is. Tough shot. He's had three or four shots, Brown, to get to 10 points, but uh, kind of a man on an island for this team for Seattle. He's got to 10 of their 22. Gerard. Too hot for Edwards. Too hot for Edwards, and also do a open here on the wing. But uh, Joe wanted to go with that pass. Not a bad baseline. It's tough. It's tough in Division One going that baseline. Things close up quick. You better be sure you can get there with a dribble off the bounce, or you got to go off two feet so you don't get called for a charge down there outside the lane. Accountable. The rebound, Gary A. And it's your ball. I think that one of the questions about George Gerard coming out of high school is he guys scored 4,700 points, and now you're saying, okay, he's a point guard. You wonder if he's a willing passer. Yes. Just because he didn't need to, and the answer has turned out to be yes. Well, I think it's a couple of things, Brian. Number one, it's his first start, right? Eventually he'll develop more into a scorer, but he has, watching him, he does have his head up. He wants to be a passer. That's half the battle. If he came out just going for his self and trying to get up 20, 30 shots, it's not going to happen to Coach Beheim's system. It just isn't as a freshman. No. And uh, I would agree with you. He, he is a willing passer, and that's going to make this team tech. He does not have to score. Brown gets another teardrop there. He does not have to score 20 for this team. Runs the break. Beheim. That's a great pass. Found Gary A and fouled. Passing's been infectious tonight. Yeah, it's a great pass, a great pass there by Buddy. And even a, a pass prior to that, Gerard giving the handoff to Buddy, giving him the corner to turn around. Uh, to give him the corner on the right, left wing there on the right side down the middle of the lane. Jim Beheim has to be pleased thus far tonight. And his team having really the best half it's played all season to date. No doubt. No doubt. Carrier misses the first. Morgan Means returning to the Red Hawks lineup. 
He's one of the guys who's been in and out of the lineup with some injury issues and not major stuff for Seattle. They're hoping they clear up as they get closer to conference play, so they're full go of the whack this year. Quincy down three for six from the free throw line. Kind of shook his head there on the second make. And the free throws have been a struggle in the early season for the entire Orange team. Carter. Surrounded inside by Gary A. Edwards and Hughes. Pull up. Over the back on Edwards for the foul here. Coach didn't like that one. I mean, it's his third one. He's missing. Say, hey, kind of go inside or let's get a better look. The rare caveat to the ultra green light. Yeah. Sometimes it, you go for three or for four, someone's open. You mean? You might get a quizzical arm shrug from Coach Payton. I'm like, you know, hey, come on, get it inside. Here's Miles Carter at the line, the fifth-year senior out of Chicago, started at Seton Hall, transferred to Seattle. He's found great success. His second year starting for the Red Hawks. But 37 points the other night. It's big time. Amazing. It's the free throw, and Dolajai returning. This program in Seattle only really a decade back into being a D1 team. So to be at this level, to be picked to be one of the better teams in the WAC, it's not nothing for what they're building out there. No. Great future with a great coach. Carter hits both eight points for Miles Carter. And Terrell Brown have 18 of the 24. Gerard's pass a bit ambitious and stolen by DeCampo. Simple pass to Buddy on the wing. Yeah, first turnover for him. And, you know, we talked about Seattle getting down to 10. This is trouble zone here. You're down 20. Uh, the last seven minutes have not been very impressive. He's impressive, though. That's Terrell Brown with 12 now. And the Orange can hold for the final shot of the half. And Jabam will take his use it or lose it timeout to figure out what they'd like to do here in the last 22 seconds. I'm interested to see what they uh, do here. We saw almost a clear out for Dolajai the last game. They got uh, some options here this year. Sure you do. Uh, you can go high screen and roll with Gerard. Obviously, you can uh, set something up, a double screen on the baseline for Buddy. Buddy's been very hardly gu guarded hard since they put Brown on him. He had six early. And um, he, stayed at, he stayed at six. He had two threes early. But uh, I also like Elijah Hughes. You have so many options with this team that are interchangeable. But uh, Marek Doge, I'd probably be the last of the four of those that I would isolate. But he's done it before. And let's see what the, uh, the Hall of Famer does here. In his 44th year, coaching at his alma mater. Now his options. On the court will be Gerard Guerrier Dolajai Hughes and his son Buddy. We'll get hyped for Bayheim Bowl later in the night. That's coming up. It's big. On, big on uh, Wednesday. Wednesday night. Cornell in town. Brother versus brother. Buddy and Cornell's leading scorer, Jimmy Bayheim, the older of the Bayheim boys. Always fun for us. I don't know how fun it is for them, but we enjoy it. Always enjoy it. Here's Carter. Gary Eight. Dolajai now. Driving. Hughes. Three seconds. Hughes to beat the horn. Three quarters down, but won't drop for Elijah at halftime. But a half completely controlled by the Syracuse Arge. Slow starts have been the story of the season. Not tonight. Elijah Hughes, double figures. In the first half, and Joe Girard will lighten it up in his first career start. Jonathan Oppi, Demetrius Nichols in the studio after this. Battle, and we're just about ready for the start of the second half. Orange up by 18. Thanks for watching. All right, Jonathan and Demetrius, thank you. Syracuse, a 44-26 a lead here inside the Dome. Ryan Higgins with Matt Rowe for the start of the second half, and uh, they said it, that it has been scorching hot shooting for whatever reason that guy in the starting lineup or whatever led to it but the orange 
They are killing it from the outside today with 7 to 14 from 3. And really, I think Elijah Hughes got a little carried away with three or four shots late. He had to take the shot at the end of the half, Brian, mm -hmm. but two or three of them forced. He's two for seven with Gerard and Buddy Beheim. Three for three and, and two for four. That's great percentage from your backcourt. And those are the first three to touch it to start the second half for the Orange. Collision off ball with DeCampo and Dolezal. And a foul on the Italian. We're going with the green outfit here. It's like the uh, Celtics or Notre Dame leprechaun back there wiping up the floors. I love that. You don't miss the mops around you here. You do not miss. That's the green light we're talking about right there, Brian. <laughs> green light for mopping. <laughs> Sidibe. Uh, there's a couple extra steps there, Barama. <laughs> he ended up in a very uh, yeah. different place than he had started. Got a step before the dribble, a step after. Extra steps we're talking, not just one. You get two, but he, he got about five combined in that possession. He was spreading them out. I think he was distracted by the mop guy. The orange 18-point lead here is where the opening minute after halftime. Fans on their feet awaiting that first made field goal. Seattle will get its first crack at one here in the second half. See if we see more of Terrell Brown and Miles Carter, their two stars, after halftime. They've not gotten a lot of help well, yet Kyle's today, those two. He's putting Brown at the free throw line as a guard, so he's surrounded with shooters trying to get that high post feed. That was a ninth consecutive missed three-pointer by Seattle. They just won in the first half. There he gets it at the free throw line. Helps initiate some offense and leads to a made three by Morgan Means. Wow, that's the second one, and it's a big one. You've got to break that zone up a little bit. Well, so putting the best player in a different spot in the sure. court works out for Seattle. Beha. Hughes. Talked about the Hughes threes in the first half. Works his way to the rim this time. And a chance for one more. It's an isolation pro move right there. Baseline didn't have it. Watch the split of the double here. It's very interesting. Fake go through it and that's a, that's a sin for the defense to let the offensive player split you in a trap. He talked about maybe he got a little three happy in the first half and that seemed to be a pretty exact response to it here to start the second half. Oh, I mean, it, it's not like his shooting percentage was bad. It's four for nine, but you, you, you can't live and die with that three and you're really in this team, you want to look to the backcourt of Buddy and Gerard as your, your deadly shooters. Gerard and Hughes, 13 points each now, and a three ball down for Delonte Jones. So after one in their first 13 of the game, back-to-back -back threes by the Red Hawks, means then Jones. Seattle shaking a little bit of that jet lag. Ryan, right second half, came out on fire, six quick points. Got to town last night at 11 o'clock. They were calling it 8 o'clock. They're staying at Pacific like time it. their whole trip. I like it. They'll right. be down to Ole Miss next on Tuesday night, part of this preseason NIT tip-off. Jim Hayford said, yeah, don't change the watches. They're, right now, they're, they think it's about 8 o'clock. Like or they said, think it's about 5 o'clock, rather. I like how he said Jedi mind tricks. He didn't want to play Jedi mind tricks on his team, which is going to stay West Coast time. Sure. And Yeah, why reset the whole thing when you're only out here for a few days? Your games are at night anyway. Bayheim, a quarter three to answer. Sadibe. Hughes initiates and an offensive foul. First on Elijah Hughes. Morgan Means, great defensive positioning here. Look at slide the feet. And he's lucky the right foot stayed put there. Questionable, but got to give got to give the visiting team something. The home team leads by 15 early stages after halftime. Carter. Gerard breaks it up, but Means, or Jones rather, reels it back in. Jones and Means have hit the last two threes. Now Brown, shot clock dwindling. Collision, and a foul on Hughes. Back-to-back -back fouls on Elijah Hughes, the orange star. It was a late shot clock foul as well. It's not a good one. One head coach perplexed. Gerard up on Jones. Gerard stretching that zone. Brown. Tough shot.
points in the last three possessions. Beheim. A long one for Gerard. Feeling it. That's deep. 16 in his first career start. Hasn't missed. Watch his feet out there. He's never stops moving. He's on the balls of his feet. That's what's called a motor, Gerard. He's just constantly bouncing around, bouncing around, never flat-footed, always moving, always hand up. Look at it. Bounces like a tennis player is getting a, a serve. Just ready to go. And this is our defense, too. We're talking right. about him scoring. This is at the other end. Here's the rebound. Outlets Gerard. The lob. Sidibe! A lot of IQ there. Well, just like on Wednesday against Colgate, he goes three-pointer into a lob for Sidibe. At almost the same exact point of the game. Well, be interesting the more time Gerard gets where he's not looking over his shoulder, Brian. It's Arsenal. I mean, he showed he can pass, defending. Uh, the shooting's going to come, and it has tonight four for four from three. Here's your little uh, right handed hook. Use both hands down there, Carter. Got back in the scoring. He's been, he hasn't scored in a while down there. Gerard got a heat check something in him now. Here's Beheim. Dolezal, another one of those pump fakes. That earned some free throws. But the story of the night has been Joe Girard. He's been making the shots. And the new Syracuse starting point guard. He's got a feel for the passing as well. Finding Maraba Sidipe. Draft pick. Two of them here today. Elgin Baylor had Seattle on the precipice of a national championship back in 56. And the guy you played with, D.C., number one overall in 1990. Yeah, two impressive uh, players, obviously, Hall of Famers, uh, eventually with Derek. But... Um, Came in with Derek in 1986, and um, they, they, schools share a lot. The same uh, SU uh, abbreviation of the schools, and uh, two coaches with Jim, and um, that's about it after tonight. This is, <laughs> and to the two number about, one draft that's picks. That's about it, and two draft picks. you got three things going for them. That's it. They almost Try. each had one national title, but Seattle couldn't quite get it done back in 58. Correct. Uh, but uh, I, I don't see these teams playing each other for a while. Not a home-and-home? Home? No. NIT got it right, and that's, it's a good matchup. These early season tournaments lead to matchups that you just wouldn't normally get no. as Terrell Brown knocks down a three. Big three for him, leading the way. Two same guys. We knew Carter and Brown. They have 27 of their 39, and no one else has really stepped up for him. Gerard. It's perfect, five for five. It's a foul there, and a chance to <laughs> have a chance for 19 points here. Let's see if he goes perfect from the free throw. It's the only thing he hasn't had a chance to do. Oh, he had two for two earlier. Yeah, two for two. two for, go five for five. Well, the first two free throws he shot in his Syracuse career, so here will be three, four, and five. Gerard at the line, and he's done it all well thus far tonight in his first career collegiate start. Couldn't ask for more, really. That's another 15 minutes to pile on. Still hasn't missed anything. Sure. I mean, look at the stroke, though. It's just so it's right in the pocket. Backspin, left hands out the ball. Backspin's got a chance to go in. It's perfect release. 19 for Gerard. This is amazing. This is 25 minutes into his first career start. He has not missed a shot. Yes. Very nice. How about Buddy has not scored since early on with that second three. He's been stuck at six. Foul on Beheim there. Well, you said it. Matt. They switched the defense up. They, they got him. Terrell Brown, who's quite a defender on him in the early going after he hit those two threes. And that shut down a Beheim here. They found a way to shut down his backcourt mate. Well, he can't guard them both. Seattle's had a good start of the half on offense, but the Orange with Gerard have responded. 18-point halftime lead now sits at 16. So Seattle outscoring the Orange in the second half, but just by two. Means pocket pick by Gerard. Quick hands. Got to love the diving on the floor. Arrow back to Seattle. Well, Gerard is currently in the end zone of the football field essentially and would have been there with Glens Falls in the state title game as their starting quarterback a year ago 
Well, this is where he makes his home on the basketball court. Aaron Jones has been active all night. Three ball for Jones, and Seattle couldn't hit anything in the first half. Not the case here. After halftime, a 4-3 in the second half already. And two for him. He's starting to feel it a little bit, Jones. Jones has hit a couple. Terrell Brown got one. Morgan Means as well, all after halftime for Seattle after a 1-for-12 first half from three. Hughes the mid-range. The one, the one and the three, the point guard and the small four, really putting on a great show here. 15 and 19 points, both. It's kind of the, the two versus two. It's just not necessarily the two we expected. Correct. For the Arch. Buddy, we thought Buddy would be in the place of Gerard. And Joe Gerard has stepped up at his first career start. Hitting for a 20-point outing if he scores again. Instead, it's Mattia DeCampo from the outside with his first three of the season. Coming from everywhere in the second half. He played 55 minutes and two losses. Had uh -huh. not had a field goal. This is probably going to be their third loss. And he finally got one. That will make Jim Hayford happy. Sidibe fouled on the way up. Great pass, drive, draw, dish to Sidibe. Gerard staying low, little scoop pass there. Great recognition. So Sidibe at the line for a couple. Well, Sidibe is going to be asked to do a lot this year for the Orange. Pascal Chuku handled the center last year, and Sidibe was just bothered with bum knees. Well, your ear feels a lot better. Is there any showing it, I think, here the first uh, two-plus games? Yes, he's strong at the line, usually makes the first free throw, but they, they've got to get him some touches down there. I mean, you have to just a touch, and even if he passes out, he can spread the court real well. I think he'll have a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities this year to go just drop step his man or jump hook, get an easy, easy move. But the knees look healthy. He's got a nice stride to him, and uh, good guy to anchor the defense back there. Well, seven now for Sidibe. Three went double figures last time out with his third career double-double. Still early stages after halftime. Once settled into a 14-point lead. And another three from Seattle, Delonte Jones. Well, they couldn't hit anything in the first half, and they can't miss here in the second half. And hanging around here, that is six threes after halftime. Delonte Jones, is all three threes have hit nothing but net. And I'll tell you what, he's done a great job defending Buddy Beheim when Brown has not been on him. He's been the other second defender. Brown can't finish. That would have cut it down to single digits. Hughes. Dolajai fouled on the catch. I would have liked on that last play for Brown. The worst move he made is he got in the lane and he had Delonte Jones to his left who's hit three threes. I would have given that one up. You know, he nails that three down. You know, Coach Beheim's going to take a timeout up eight. Delonte Jones subbing out. That is the fourth foul already for Delonte Jones. So that's big, big nose for Seattle. He'd Finally heated up for the outside. He'd been shooting cold all season, scalding in the second half, but now Jim Hayford will have to manage his minutes here. A fourth foul with 12.27 to go. The key now is you watch. He's going to be defending Buddy. He's got Brown on Gerard. Now who switches off? Delonte Jones did a great job defensively on Buddy. Two for Dolashai. Well, Seattle can hit another one of these threes. They haven't been missing it all in the second half. They get it down to 10. The guy that's been making him is on the bench with fouls. Means foul shooting at two. Sidibe and Gerard in the area. And Gerard will pick up his second. Ever want to foul a shooter? Ever. Show, hand in the face. You don't want to come down on the arm. Morgan Means in the line for a pair. That's well, got to be helping Seattle, Matt, here in the second half. In the first half, we were talking about Miles Carter and Terrell Brown and not much else. That it's spread out. Everybody out there is contributing on offense after halftime. Absolutely. And we talked about the others before the game. You know, both teams come in with two solid scores. So no one's really stepped up to prove themselves. Gerard being the one on Syracuse side, and definitely Delonte Jones the second half for Seattle. Well, this was an 18-point game of the half. It's down to 11 right now. And Seattle, a chance to cut it to single digits here with 12 minutes to go. Morgan Means. 
DeCampo wisely slows it down. They'll get it to their best guy. Here's Terrell Brown. DeCampo, another three, and Nettles makes one and in this thing. Wow. Couldn't buy one in the first half. In the second half, Seattle cannot miss. Points in the game, three for three for the free throw line, but uh, watch these makes. Uh, not many touching the rim. Uh, really feeling it. Good follow through, straight ahead. They missed him in the corner to get the game down to nine earlier, but just great ball fake right there. Beautiful arc. Uh, feeling it, and uh, seven for eight. This is the impressive thing also, Brian. With that free throw, not many teams come in here with a depth perception. Seattle's 10 for 10 for the free throw line. Well, fashionably late to the party tonight. They started one for 12 from three. They're seven of eight here in the second half. Another orange turnover. Now Jones is on the bench with the fouls, but they've had a bunch of other guys hitting the threes. Jim Beheim tries to get the defense going. This was 18 again at the half. Down to seven right now. Yeah, it's a ball game. Syracuse had a lead at one point as large as 23. Sidibe forces a turnover. And that's not what you want to do against the zone is dribble six times at the free throw line. Gerard! A 20-point game in his first start. 21 now. First Five. collegiate start. I think this locks up starting for a while. I think so. It'll buy you at least a second. Buy you, it might buy you a starting spot until ACC play. Uh-huh. Terrell Brown, tough shot. Very tough. Bad possessions, you give it down. Single figures, you have a turnover dribbling against the zone and a bad fall away. Hughes, attacks. Wide open. And Hughes can't hit the clean look. Transition here for Carter. Oh, tough move. I thought he should have passed out of that double team. Can the Arch take advantage? Beheim quiet since early. Now Hughes again. Beheim finds Dolishai. Can run a lot of weave with those guards with Gerard Beheim, Elijah Hall. Somewhat very good with the ball. Probably the best two are Gerard and Hughes, but uh, easy back doors for Marek. Whoever's in that forward position, even Sidibe. Lead back to double figures. Three ball for Means. Finally a Seattle miss. Brown on the rebound can't finish. And Gerard again. Seem to have ideas of one on four for a second. Sure, why not? You will put that up at Glens Falls. You know that. In and out left, he's throwing a jump hook there. 100%. Wide open, Gerard. Late close by DeCampo. May have altered it, but Dolajai finishes. And they're going to get Joe Gerard for a flopping warning spotted by yeah. James Brady. Well, that's three games in Gerard's career. He's gotten two flop warnings, the new rule this year. You get an actual flop call that's a technical. Trying to kick through the old Reggie Miller there with a kick of the leg, which there was really no contact. Yes. Bring him up. Get him up. Well, two and three games. Only is blemish. Is he leading the lead or leading the country in flop warnings in the early go? Only blemish of the day. Air ball three. Still has 21 points. His third collegiate game in his first start. Sidibe a block. Large by 13. Hughes. Tough shot. Sidibe and Dolajai trying to save it. And a foul is spotted. Ooh. Apparently on Seattle. See what happened here. Carter with a block there. Sidibe, great hustle. Uh, foul. DeCampo yeah. and Dolajai hooks there. That's his fourth foul. They 42 to go. And already. The bonus. You have, to, you have to come back here with Jones. I like this move. Yep. Can't get the game out of control out of control with the guy that got you back in it on the bench. Correct. 
So Delonte Jones back in with the four. Size off the bench in the form of Jordan Dallas, the 6 in grad student. Transfer out of Weber State. Dolajai hits the front end. What? And a second coming here for Merrick Dolajai. Let's see if the Orange have absorbed Seattle's best punch at this point as Dolajai goes one for two. The coach going a long time with his starting line. No subs in the second half yet for the Orange with Garrier at the table. And there's Terrell Brown again. 19 now for the veteran guard. Gerard! Why not? That's a heat check off the glass. You gotta laugh at that. It's a pullback. It's absolutely crazy. That's how you score 4,700 in high school. 24 tonight for Gerard. My goodness. He is a fun player to watch. It's all going well for you when you know you bank it straight ahead uh -huh. like that. That's a phenomenal night. You airball one three, and you take the next and bank it in. Jordan Dallas banks it in from a little bit closer. But how about Joseph Gerard the third as the Orange have stretched third college game, first career start. It's amazing. Um, just to, you know, when you start your first game, you just want to contribute, not make mistakes. You know, you figure, all right, if he has 10, 12 points, great game. This is a career game. It's tough to have a game like this and um, match it. Just field goal percentage-wise, decision-making, he's probably had one or two turnovers. Uh, he got whistled for flopping, but that's mm -hmm. about the only things he's done wrong. And it's going so well for him that, uh, you know, he banks in a, a, a step back through the leg three-pointer. It's uh, going so well for him, Matt. we got to ask you some some trivia. He's led us to think about who has scored the most points in a game for the Orange as a freshman. That's a great question. Who I, you got? I, I got it. I had it. Carmel Anthony. 33 the semifinal game. He scored 33 against the Longhorns in the great semifinal game back in 2003. Mello had some 30 point games in his career. Pearl Washington is also in that 30 point club. So Gerard not at 30, but we're talking about some pretty good people in the same conversation right now. Correct. Two of the best in Q's history. Though I take the 33 in a semifinal game of the yeah. national championship. That was. Uh, I got him to the final, and that's why they got the only. NCAA championship hanging in the rafters here in 03. Mello just signed with the Blazers earlier this week. Well, Joe Girard. Big tonight. As Seattle goes from here. They leave for Oxford, Mississippi. They'll play Old Miss on Tuesday. All part of the NIT season tip-off. Syracuse has a game midweek against Cornell. That's not a part of that. Then we'll take on Bucknell uh, next Saturday as part of this. Then at Madison Square Garden over Thanksgiving, Wednesday and Friday of Thanksgiving week, Ole Miss, Penn State, Syracuse and Oklahoma State will be there. Houston, and Oklahoma State, Ole Miss and Penn State will be the semis and Seattle will get to go down to Orlando as part of this tournament. I love how you get to go to the Final Four in New York, no matter what. You no do. matter what. You're losing both by 20. You're still there. So well, they, some of the better teams missed out on some of these and had to change up the rules a little bit. Sure, sure. Gardner Webb over Kentucky back in the day comes Ooh. to mind. Kentucky took one on the chin oh, against Evansville, Evansville this week. Yeah, anybody can beat anybody, right? The first darn sub of the second half is Quincy Guerrier, and he will head to the line for a pair. He wanted the lob. Foul on Jordan Dallas. The Red Hawks big. Quincy's got to we'll come with time to be able to power through that and finish the layup. Oh, those broad shoulders, mm -hmm. got to go right through the shot blocker. Could ease his burden at the foul line, too, if you only need to make the one. He's now four of eight. The line tonight, five for nine. It's been a good little spark off the bench here because Coach hasn't gone deep in the second half. Only sub he's taken out with uh, uh, Sidibe out for Quincy. It's a little smaller here with Dolajai in his center, though he's quite used to that, essentially being the backup center and backup forward last year. Steal by Hughes. Beheim leaves off for Gerard. 
Oh, it just makes the simple pass. Uh, it's a turnover, as I'm saying that, but it's always hitting the guy with a crisp pass ahead. A little freshman turnover there. Can't get it all right in his no. first career start. That would set the bar a little high. They gotta, they gotta have some film breakdown to show some, some things he's done <laughs> bad. I don't know if the banked in three goes under good or bad, but it was fun. Three ball miss from Delonte Jones, who's cooled off with his time on the bench with the fouls. Gary A a three. Love Can't join pass, his freshman. Though. Love the pass by Gerard with the seams, crisp, right to the shooter. Coached well. Terrell Brown. Gerard wants to run. Gary A fills. And more free throws for the freshman Quincy Garrier who's hit the dick hard a couple times tonight. Coach just called over Joe. Just I thought he was going to give him some instruction. He's looking to say, "We're doing well." Thanks, Coach. All right. Well, you don't Wasn't want to turn down that advice from the Hall of Famer. Just wanted to like have a moment with him. He kind of saw his eyes up there and snapping off the pass this time down the court. That's the kind of stuff you're talking about, that he's very aware yeah, of what's going on. Stuff you can't teach, you know, it's just it's the little things. But um, I, I think that the, the art of passing is, is a lost art. Um, but just he's always looking ahead. He's not trying to do anything crazy. But if a guy's open with Marek on the left side this time, if it's Hughes, he's, he, get, he gets him the ball in the right spot. And it's quick. It's not a soft. Tight thumbs down. And he set up his fellow Frost, Quincy Garrier. Garrier has taken as many free throws tonight as Seattle. Garrier has been aggressive inside in his minutes on the court. Orange have eased back out in front now, up 16 in the latter stages. Three ball for Means. Rebounding foul as Beheim was fouled, and he will shoot the Orange in the double bonus chance to add to his total. He's been stuck at six since 15 minutes to go in the first half. And the two early threes. Yeah. Well, Jim Hayford's club, they're set up for a nice season in the Western Athletic Conference, but he said it, these games, they're kind of, you just kind of come and play when you're a team like this in a game like this and see what happens. You don't, you don't grind it to death. You, you hope for the best and they gave it a nice run early in the second half tonight. They really did. They have its both. 18-point lead again for the Orange. This was the halftime margin. And it shrunk down as close as eight when Seattle went on that three-point barrage to start the half. Led by this guy, Jones. And he's cooled off. I think the, that fourth foul hurt him too, though, Brian. He had to sit for three minutes, four minutes. Was in a good defensive rhythm on Buddy. Made his last three, and then all of a sudden, uh, that's why I don't think Joe's going to get a chance to go for 33. I think that's the last we've seen him, and what a, what a start it was. And Gerard will sub out, and Goodine will return to the game. But they are inch. once up only eight. They've stretched it. Always a fun time. Looking forward to see what shirts Julia has printed up this year. She's gotten a new shirt yeah. for the Bayheim versus Bayheim every year so we'll see what uh, what style she's bringing in on wednesday night she might have been looking at it on her phone right there got to get them printed up got to get them ready yeah We're looking forward to it all the all the bayheim family involved in collegiate basketball one way or another and julie's going to schedule it all to get to all these games at three different schools here is buddy out top now good eye buddy to the rack. And the Orange lead by 20. Good move there. Julie approves. Puts him into double figures, buddy. Joining Gerard and Hughes. Well, Starch is out of it a bit here for Seattle as Goodine comes away with the steal. Been a nice push early in the second half. Goodine. Been a good reversal there to Buddy in front of the bench. I don't know if he was shot it wide open. It's probably the cleanest he would have gotten all night. Toll is high instead, all the way home. I tell you what, he uh, it's been under the radar tonight, obviously with Gerard, but uh, Marek is just it's a tough guard. It's six eight six nine out in the perimeter, be able to put it on the floor like that. He's getting more confident. You saw it with a spin move against Colgate, but uh, you know you spread the court with him and give him driving lanes. You're almost five out, no in. Pick your poison. 
The Irons have gotten it done near the rim today. A lot of that is Dolge. He's got 18 points tonight. Yeah, you haven't even talked about him. No, he's kind of snuck his way up to 18. Quiet. Tonight, just two off a career high of 20. And Gerard has been the one that's opened eyes, but Marek, and what he's done this year as he gets a steal now, that in many ways also really helps out where the art ceiling this year could be. Behan. Rebounding foul as Garrier grabbed on the way up. Well, the Orange had it up to a 23-point lead at one point in the first half. Down eight in the second. But Syracuse pulling away in the dome. The Old West. At least these guys get to fly everywhere. In the, in the Continental Basketball League, sometimes we take buses. Mm -hmm. It's not too fun. How about the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley Vipers? And on them in the whack this year. Preseason favorites, New Mexico State. They won all of their whack games last year. They were a dangerous team. Grand Canyon being coached by Thunder Dan Marley. Loved him. One of my favorite players in the NBA with Phoenix. Mm -hmm. He uh, can shoot the three and bring it to the rim and dunk on him. What do you think Dan Marley would have been in today's game? Oh, Shooting been, those threes? He, he, unbelievable. That th three and D, the epitome of it, but also could go to the rack. Uh-huh. Played with Kevin Johnson, Charles Barkley. Yep. Hornacek, don't don't forget about Jeff Hornacek. Oh there yeah, Hornacek there. 93 yeah. finals. Sabalos. Oh, Say, wow. if not oh, for yeah. one Michael Jeffrey Jordan, all those guys would have sure. a ring. Sure. Barkley probably would have had that final. They, oh, they, absolutely. I think Chicago won that series four to two. And Barkley was unbelievable. But Michael Jordan was still on one of the teams, and that worked out all right. Six times. Here's Goodine, waning stages here in the Dome with the Orange up 20 and a double dribble called on the freshman out of Rhode Island. Now the Orange by 20 start rounding into form and there was so much talk, the Virginia game, 34 points. And they didn't have a game for a week. How could it possibly go right for Syracuse this year? And hey, this is not the defense of Virginia, nobody is. Nope. But they are starting to find their way on offense. I just like the confidence, and I, I know it is Seattle. It's it's not like an ACC game, but uh, I, I like what I saw tonight with the spacing and what Gerard brought to the table, of being unselfish and being able to score too. Foul in the screening act as Dolajai and Economo came this together. Out. They're going to check. They're going to check it on this. You have to go to the monitor on this. Dolajai hunched over a bit. It's a good, pretty good forearm. You played a bit against this guy's dad. Way back in the day, Rip Economo, his dad, uh, Greg, was a backup for UConn in your era. He, his dad didn't play a lot, but right. he did play for UConn. Is this, is, is this like an old grudge? Is he yeah. It's a, back it's in the 80s, shoulder. early Jim Calhoun years in charge yeah. of the Huskies. Well, let's check the monitor here and see what happened. Anything untoward? I don't realize when Calhoun left Northeastern, they really struggled at UConn. I mean, mm -hmm. Cliff Robinson from the Buffalo area played for him. It kind of turned around. We're going to Tate George, but um, he did marvelous things at UConn. I don't know if there's anything to that. Just kind of ran into hard him. play. Play on. I don't know if he realized he was there until it was too late. Eh, I think it looks like they're going to say nothing to it. James Breeding discussing with Jim Hayford. That's what officiating crew tonight with Breeding, Bert Smith, Lamar Simpson. So just a common foul, which will send Dolajai to the line for two anyway. Max going a little uh, goatee here. I didn't really see that earlier. He's, he's working on it. He's working. It's, it's, uh, it is it's sporadic. The Slovakian stash. Got to keep it. There you Got go. Close up. There you go. It's probably the only place beside the top of his head. You know, you Sparse, uh, sparse beard though. You think you get a full beard. That missed free throw leaves him one shy of equaling his career high of 20. He's on 19, but a huge game for Dolajai. He's got four assists. He's got three steals as well. He's been everywhere. It's been great. Orange by 21. Nice save in the corner. Trey Hopkins in for the first time. And Terrell Brown gets one to drop. 21 now for Brown. He's right on his average pretty much. Yeah, actually, uh, 20, 23, the scoreboard has him up Oop. there. He hit his average, 22.5. It's not bad coming in Syracuse and getting your average, especially flying across the country in a little jet lag. And uh, he was impressive. Stepping on this court for the first time. Good eye. Guerrier 
Hunt. Finishing at the rim. Tell you what, I like it. I like his uh, his game tonight. He plays aggressive, plays downhill, mm -hmm. gets to the free throw line, as we've said. Um, he works on his jump shot a little bit. He's going to be a, a great threat. Academo, uh, air ball in the corner three as we head to the final two minutes with the orange up by 21. We're talking about Gary, you got a little three hat. Don't have a bad missed them all. Now yeah. getting more toward the rim. For this offense, you know, so much great fakes. Just know your role, be able to drive. Ball flipped all over, and Dolajai couldn't finish for a new career high. Brown. Foul on the floor. That's a downhill guy, too. Mm -hmm. He gets the ball on that open court. Didn't have many turnovers. Played very solid. Probably missed three or four shots that he normally makes, but very impressed with Brown here today. Well, he's going to be one of the best players in the WAC, regardless no of where they got to travel and play this year. He's no going to be about he's a, a star in that league. He's a gamer. Brings maximum effort. Not just an offensive player, either, Brian. I mean, he was really impressed with his defense and how Coach Hayford put him on different players to start the game. He put him off, took him off Gerard, put him on Buddy, shut down Buddy for four or five minutes. At times, he's been guarding Elijah Hughes. Uh, kind of an unbelievable defender. He misses that one and one, but uh, does it all. Put back by Trey Hopkins. You see a name Hopkins was looking at a school out in Seattle. I said, wait a minute, Mike Hopkins. Former Syracuse assistant, now third year coaching Washington. His sons aren't old enough to be in college. It's not one of Mike's sons. Well, got, uh, his wife's name Trish. And he, he got uh, one of his sons. Is, I just saw him at the Seattle game. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no trays. It, it caused me to griff. think for more than. Yeah, he's, he's got, got the, the griff, griff, not the tray. It caused me to think for more than zero seconds about it anyway. Yeah, it does. But two times Pac-12 Coach of the Year, Mike Hopkins, he and Jim Hayford have become fast friends out Seattle way. It's They'll amazing. play in a few weeks, mid-December. It's a great uh, situation Hop has out there. <clears throat> great fan following. Uh, football game out there. Was there watched them play Oregon. Uh, but um, Matt Rose getting in the boat tailgating scene. So so much to so much to offer out there and recruit. It's just uh, the only thing I didn't like it was I, I, I told this to Coach Hafer. I, I, I only saw the sun for like five minutes out there. We're used to it in Syracuse, but it came out during the football game and the crowd went crazy. It was raining the whole game and then sun came out. Unbelievable. Uh, but fun to watch Hop and practice and interact with his guys. <clears throat> That's a, has a great team out there this year. I, I, I think they're going to win the Pac-10. Checking on a clock issue right now. It had been stopped when it shouldn't have been. And you gotta, gotta get it reset. All right now showing 57 seconds and we're ruled good to go here in the final minute with the orange leading it by 19. And now the shot clock's not moving. Not sure if this one's going to have an effect on the outcome tonight, but I think they will. You can just announce it. Yeah, You'll go old school like N one mixtapes. You just announce it with. Uh, we'll get you the mic, Matt. Yeah. Matt, you just start yelling yeah. out numbers. Twenty nine left. Well, they'll get this figured out. There's less than a minute left in the game that Syracuse has uh, long ago locked up tonight. Eighty six points by far, a season high. Went from thirty four in the opener to seventy against Colgate. Now eighty six tonight. That's. Pretty positive trend here, three games into the year. Always feels like the end of the game, Brian, where fans start leaving like they turn off the heat in here. Get a little chilly <laughs> in the last three minutes. <clears throat> Take a look at Seattle's upcoming schedule as they're next up headed to Oxford, Mississippi to take on Ole Miss. That'll be on Tuesday night. They're calling it at 430 because they're staying on their own time, but 730 Eastern and Bucknell part of this tournament, a team that Syracuse is playing on Saturday. Gary Eight. And to the line again, and one. Quincy has shown some power inside tonight. Wouldn't this late with guys, why are they just fouling? I get it. I, want, I know you want to play hard, but at some point you can't roof like that. It is a foul. Well, Gary A, one of five orange players in double figures right now. Good game for him. 14 points. Yeah, sitting on 14 here. It's a career high by a lot. His previous career had been two, but he'd only played a couple of career games. And now 
Jim Bam will bring some walk-ons on the floor. Brendan Paul and Sean Belby into the game at the top of the zone in the guard spots. Elijah Hughes, though, he's still out there. Elijah's going, Elijah's going never, to hurt tonight. He never comes out. And Elijah with a steal. The shot clock is off, I suppose, unless Elijah feels like finding a look for one of the walk-ons. And Point the out. Orange will pretty much take it from tip to final horn here tonight inside the dome. Matt Rowe, this was an impressive effort tonight for the Arch. It's good. It was, uh, very fascinating to watch Brian with Joe Girard's first start. He brought, he delivered. Uh, reminded him a lot of what he played in Guns Falls and um, only missed one shot. Uh, a couple turnovers, that's about it. But uh, he led this team and don't forget about Marek Dolge. I also played solid as did Elijah Hughes. What a great team effort and I thought it was all started with Joe Girard being able to facilitate and do the special things. Well, Joe Girard, 24 points in his first career start for the Orange. And just a reminder, our next Syracuse telecast of men's basketball will be coming up Wednesday night here on ACC Network Extra as the Cornell Big Red in town at 7.30. So for Matt Rowe, I'm Brian Higgins saying so long from the Dome. Our final score, 89-67 Orange. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.